So this is Julie Murphy with Arizona For Farm Bureau. I'm off camera. I'm, I'm speaking to Ramona Button. Ramona, tell me this: the land that we see out here in the background. Tell me, tell me that story. Um, <clears throat> when I was four, I was probably 1951 or somewhere in that area. But this 10 acres belonged to my mother, who is a tribal member of the Gila River Pimas, and which we call the Akimaraldam. And um, <clears throat> my dad brought me over here when I was four years old and said, this is our farm. This is your mother's land. We're going to farm this 10 acres. So half of it will be farmed for horses, and the other half will be for human, for our consumption. Half for horses and half for human consumption. Yes. Which mean includes our relatives. What we grow here, our relatives will be also fed. And, and also in sharing and maybe uh, bartering because at that time people didn't have money. And so what we do is we do the bartering system and what they have. They might have like in, just west of here, the Sacktone area, the, uh, there was farm known as uh, Progressive Area. Progressive Area, they had the, uh, I believe they were the Baptist colony. So they had hogs, they had wheat, they had vegetables, they had melons, squash, oh, and just about everything. But my father was really good at growing the uh, chilies, the green chilies that we get from um, uh, in New Mexico now, the real hot green chilies. He was good at raising them. And also on this land, there was a huge mesquite tree that we would cook under or prepare our foods while we worked in the field here. And so we, this is almost just like my home. And I had the beautiful Santan Mountains in front of us that I'd always look over and I told my mom and dad, you know what, there are the curtains. To me, they were like the curtains, okay? You open it and you do a show. Where the sun rises, you begin your farming. And my dad taught me that we have to pray before we touch the land and as the crops grow, protect them. Also, keep an eye on them because uh, anything can come in here and overtake the small plants. So we have to be out here. And is it correct, <clears throat> this original 10 acres of your mother's, the Ramona Farms, you're still farming it, correct? Yes, we are. We're still farming it today and we started in 72 with uh, a lot of the native with uh, plants that correct yes right. yes my father grew the tepary beans he grew the um, wheat uh, the artus birkin we call it which is the uh, pima club wheat which was well known for our runners they would take a beautiful basket grandma show me they would take a beautiful basket with a beautiful design on it, put in water, Her, uh, the head of the household would have made a fire already, okay, and take that, she would take the coals, put it in the basket, she would take the wheat berries, the autosperican, and she would roll them around, swish them around to cook the wheat, and when she, she'd sing a song, and then she would move it around and then stop as she saw the wheat being browned over. And then she'd take the coals out again and then take the wheat and let it dry and then grind it up on either. A, back then it was the grinding stone, but we've gone to the little, um, I forget what you call it, but it's, it sits, you can hook it onto a table and grind it up Hand it's grinded. a manual mm -hmm. grinder so that's what she used and uh, and then uh, she would uh, 
very fine, which we do today with our mill, and, uh, and uh, give it to the runners because it was pure protein. Okay. And so the runners who deliver messages, like tw they run 20 miles, 30 miles, or take turns when they reach a certain village and put in their mouth, that was their fast food, they put in their mouth, let their saliva mix it up, and then off they go again. So we've had protein bars for a long time, but these sound a <laughs> lot healthier. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ramona. 